OK. So ladies and gentlemen, what, it, uh, what this problem asks us is it just says, determine the axis symmetry in the vertex. So please, this is what I'd like you guys to do. Until you really get good at doing these type of problems, please let's write down exactly what our a, b, and c are. Remember, every quadratic equation can be written in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Therefore, in this problem, we can say a equals 3, b equals 12, and c equals 3. Right? As each one of these values are real numbers, and either the coefficients of our uh, quadratic or linear term or our constant. Does everybody see how I got those values? OK. So now there's two formulas that we first need to work with. The first formula is what we call the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is simply just states x equals, because it's a vertical line, equals opposite of b divided by 2 times a. So all I like you guys to do to find the axis of symmetry is just take the opposite of b, which would be negative 12, divided by 2 times a. Well, 2 times a is um, 2 times 3. Therefore, it's negative 12 divided by 6, which equals negative 2. And about half the class got to this point. All right, And that's where you want to think. So what that is is that's the axis of symmetry. That is the vertical line that your um, parabola is, you know, can be reflected about, is symmetrical about. But that's not the whole part of the vertex. The axis of symmetry goes through your vertex. Remember, the vertex is either maximum or minimum of your parabola. So to determine the vertex, what we need to do is this, yeah, kind of, this is your, um, so once you know the vertex, it, or I'm sorry, the vertex, this is your x value of your vertex. We need now to find the y value of vertex. So the vertex has the formula of b divided by, opposite of b divided by 2 times a, which is the x value. And then it is f of opposite of b divided by 2a. And you might say, well, that kind of looks a little crazy. What exactly am I doing? All I, we're not dealing with a function. We're actually just dealing with an equation. But what you're going to do is simply just take your value for x and plug it into your equation. So I'll have 3 times negative 2 squared plus 12 times negative 2 plus 3. And here's where negative 2 is your value of x. Right? So remember, we found the axis symmetry, which x equals negative 2. So then what we do is we plug negative 2 in for x to find our y value. Yes? I'm plugging it into the equation for x. Okay. Now, here's where a lot of students made their mistakes. And you guys are going to want to remember this. Um, order of operations. Parentheses or grouping terms first. Then exponents and powers. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to square this first. So it's going to be y equals 3 times 4 plus, you can multiply those, which would be um, or 12 times negative 2 plus 3. Now you do multiplication and division. y equals 12 plus negative 24 plus 3. Therefore, y equals negative 9. Now you can say your vertex has an x-coordinate of negative 2 and a y-coordinate of negative 9. How do you figure out what the answer is? y equals 12 plus negative 24 plus 3, but how do you know where to like put all You just go 12 plus negative 24 is negative 12, and then negative 12 plus 3 is going to be negative 9. You always work from left to right. Yes? Well, what about the uh, vertex formula? Th this is just exactly what we did. We found what the x value is, and then what we did is we plugged the x value into our equation. And this, in the formula, this is for plugging it back into the function, which is the same thing. All it means is find your value for x, and then plug it into the, your equation or function to find the y. So that's just exactly what we did. It's just kind of the formula that you can use. Anybody have any questions? No? OK. I got the answer, but I didn't do it that way. I know. You did it wrong. You did it wrong. 